Hi everyone. Today the session is on the humerus bone. That is very important part of the upper limb. The upper limb bone consists of clavicle, scapula. This is the scapula you will see. The clavicle or collar bone, and you will see the humerus, the radius in the forearm bone on the left side. and alna on the medial side you will see and next the metacarpal the carpal and the phalanges bone now humerus is the most important bone into the arm and this is the example of the long long bone which has got upper end or the epiphysis the lower end the epiphysis and connected by intervening portion of the shaft you will see the upper end consists of a globular head which will articulate with the glenoid of the scapula forming a very important joint you know that is known as the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint that is the multi axial ball and socket type of joint and there is wide range of movement is possible and due to the presence of this wide range of movement human being is very much able to perform the work very efficiently uh, in every aspect other than the animals other animals now you will see this globular head articulate with the shallow glenoid of the scapula and next to the head the portion is the constricted neck now this neck is known as the anatomical neck and you will see the blue color i represent here this is the attachment of the capsular ligament of the shoulder joint the humeral attachment now what is the capsular attachment you see in front there is a gap in the capsule and you will see through this gap a tendon passes and the name of the tendon is that long head of the uh, biceps brachii the biceps muscle everybody of we show the biceps you will see to show the heroism next you will see so the capsular ligament descend downwards and medially and medially we will see this capsular ligament descends a bit towards the shaft so this part part of the capsule and the shoulder joint is relatively lax and the shoulder joint dislocation occur through this region next the capsule then ascends again at the articular margin of the head and ends at the near the region of the passage of the long head of the biceps so this is the capsular attachment now what are the features you will see in the upper end of the humerus you look this is the upper end apart from the head you will see this is known as the lesser tubercle small elevation is known as the lesser tubercle and this big elevation this is known as the greater tubercle you see this is the greater tubercle now in between the two tubercle you will see there is a groove and this groove extend downwards up to the region of a tuberosity which is known as the deltoid tuberosity and the name of this groove is the bicipital groove which is bounded by the two lips at one is medial lip another is the lateral lip so you will see here the two lips and the floor of the bicipital groove now you will look in this lesser tubercle a muscle is attached what is the name of the muscle the muscle is known as subscapularis that is a very big muscle this muscle is attached in the region of the lesser tubercle here so this is the uh, attachment at the lesser tubercle now this greater tubercle you will see in the greater tubercle there are impression and this impression gives attachment to the different muscle what are the name of this three different muscle 
one is known as supraspinatus you will see this is the supraspinatus muscle though this is not the scapula of the same side so i can rotate the femur and fit it so this is the supraspinatus from here the supraspinatus is inserted here next this is the infraspinatus from the infraspinatus fossa and it is inserted into the greater tubercle beneath the supraspinatus attachment and next the last impression that gives attachment to another muscle and the name of the muscle is known as the teres minor now though this attachment of the muscle insertion we will depicted in the blue color in the book but actually the color of the muscle is not blue but in the beginner we will tell that the insertion is the blue color and the origin is the red color the muscle color is that of the brown color you will see the red meat the mutton you will see the brown color fresh red brown color next you will see this is the attachment of the greater trochanter and you will see this greater tubercle it is covered in your hand you will feel near the region of the shoulder joint there is a rounded elevation near the region of the rounded contour actually the region of the shoulder and this rounded contour is formed by muscle which is known as the deltoid muscle so i will show you the deltoid muscle you will see this is the region from the clavicle it arises from the scapula it arises and it covers the shoulder joint and ultimately it is attached to the deltoid tuberosity this is the v shaped deltoid tuberosity you will see and if you attach if i attach some sticker you will see this is the actually the deltoid uh, tube look the deltoid tuberosity this is v shaped this tuberosity is v shaped you will see this whole thing is the deltoid tuberosity part of the deltoid tuberosity i have exposed and part i have covered so this muscle fan shaped muscle you will see this is the fan shape so this muscle has got anterior fiber posterior fiber and the middle fiber that is attached at the deltoid tuberosity v shaped next you will see in between the lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle you will get the that is the groove for the long tendon of the biceps brachii now the medial leap of the groove it gives attachment to a muscle and the name of the muscle is pectoralis major that means pectus means chest so it will come from the chest so i will show you the pectoralis major, major muscle you will see you will look at this uh, picture you will see this fan shaped muscle is the pectoralis major and it actually has got the clavicular head and the sternal head of the pectoralis major and inserted uh, here in the medial lip of the bicipital group similarly in the lateral lip of the bicipital group you will see there is attachment of the another muscle what is the name of that muscle and this is known as the teres minor no sorry the teres major so you will see the two major on one side and in between a lady will go that is the latissimus dorsi so this is the mnemonic of for the bicipital groove next you come below and you will see there is the three borders in the shaft of the humerus now what are the three border if you trace the um, lateral leap of the bicipital groove then you will see from the medial leap of the deltoid tuberosity there is a 
border descend downwards downwards up to a fossa and this fossa is known as the coronoid fossa that articulates with the coronoid process of the that is the ulna next this border is known as the medial border of the ulna and sorry this is the medial border of the humerus next this is the lateral border of the humerus now in between the anterior and the medial border you will get the anterior medial surface in between the anterior and the lateral border we will get the anterolateral surface and between the medial border and the lateral border behind we will get the posterior surface next at the lower end you will see if the lower end is divided into articular area and non articular area non articular area consists of the two epicondyles one is medial epicondyle which is very much prominent you can feel in your own body and behind the medial epicondyle you will get an important nerve and the name of the nerve is the me that is the ulnar nerve very important in the childhood we will take current of this by palpating this nerve so this is the ulnar nerve and when there is fracture of the medial epicondyle this nerve is prone to injury sometimes next this is the lateral epicondyle and you will get the fossae here what are the fossae the anterior fossae they are shallow one is known as the coronoid fossae another is known as the radial fossae because when you flex your elbow because the lower end of the humerus it forms the elbow joint what are the two parts of the elbow joint that is the radio humoro radial part of the elbow joint and the humoro ulnar part of the elbow joint during flexion you will see this ulnar coronoid process come to lie in this region and the radial head lie in the radial fossa next we come behind behind you will see there is another big fossa and that is very deep and this will articulate with the coronoid process of the ulna you see sorry sorry that is the olecranon process of the ulna next you will see that what is the capsular attachment of the lower end of the humerus that is the elbow joint you will the, see the capsule goes above the margin of the radial fossa and also the coronoid fossa then it excludes the lateral epicondyle goes behind it will include the this fossa that is known as the coronoid fossa so this is the attachment of the capsule next what are the muscle attached at the lower end of the humerus the muscle attached at the lower end of the humerus from the medial epicondyle a group of muscle arises by common ten origin and this group of muscle is the flexor muscles of the forearm next behind the lateral epicondyle arises the group of muscle which is the extensor muscles of the forearm so this extensor group arises from the lateral epicondyle and the flexor group arises from the medial epicondyle now in the shaft of the humerus a very big muscle um, is attached what is the name of that muscle that muscle is known as the brachialis that forms the floor of a big muscle that is known as the biceps brachii so you will see this is the attachment of the brachialis i will show you the attachment of the brachialis so this is how brachialis is attached next go on the posterior surface 
in the posterior surface that is in the back of the arm you will get only one muscle but it has got three head what are the three head it has got it has got a long head which arises from the scapula that is from the infraglenoid tubercle and this long head then there is known as the lateral head which arises above the groove this groove is known as the radial groove through which passes the arteria profunda brachii and the radial nerve and below that there is a very extensive muscle that is known as the medial head of the triceps you will see here i will make the medial head of the triceps here so the triceps muscles is attached in the humerus so you will see in the humerus i will show you the triceps this is the triceps muscle the long head the lateral head and the medial head and when you cut this head you will see the long head is here the lateral head is cut and here you will see the medial head of the triceps and last of all there is a small muscle anconius arises from the lower end of the lateral epicondyle that this anconius though it is small but it stabilizes the elbow joint so thank you everyone for inspiring me to do more videos